Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for March 4th, 2021. You know, there's still people out there who believe that Mike Pompeo, when he was Secretary of State, was carrying out the policies that President Trump supported when he ran for president and for the, at least the first three years of his administration. That Pompeo was a loyal adherent of Trump and was out there fighting the good fight for America. Now, in fact, if you saw Pompeo at the CPAC conference, he's promoting himself as a future presidential candidate. But what does he represent? He's a spokesman for what he calls the rules-based order. Who makes these rules? These are the rules of the Wall Street establishment, the city of London, MI6, the British monarchy, and Silicon Valley, and the deep state, the so-called military-industrial complex in the United States. And in this sense, he's no different than the neocons and war hawks that President Trump ran against in 2016 when he demolished the Bush machine and then the Clinton machine. Now let's just take a look at the differences between what President Trump said and what Pompeo did. Trump said the priority is to end the wars. Pompeo, continue the wars. He made no effort to support the president when the president said he wanted to pull troops out of Syria and Afghanistan. Pompeo was instead fanning the flames of war. When Trump said his goal is to end regime change because we have no right to tell other countries who they should put in their government, Pompeo continued regime change policy. He supported the existing regime change wars, including in Syria, and was pushing for regime change in Russia and China. Uh, President Trump called for collaborating and cooperating with Russia and China. Uh, for example, on North Korea, Trump worked with the two countries to, uh, to put a damper on the danger of nuclear war coming from North Korea. Instead of cooperation and collaboration with Russia and China, Pompeo proved, uh, moved ahead with sanctions against Russia, constantly attacked China, called for an encirclement of China, confrontation in the South China Sea. While Trump was working for trade deals with China, Pompeo said we have to punish China. Now, on the North Korea question, we saw Bolton and Pompeo together undermine the possibility of getting the disarmament that President Trump so earnestly fought for. Now, one final point. I've brought this up before. We at the LaRouche Organization have been fighting on this issue for a while. And I don't know if it's sunk in yet, but President Trump asked Pompeo when he was, sec when he was CIA director to meet with Bill Binney, the former technical director of the NSA, and one who proved that there was no Russian hacking or meddling in the 2016 election. So Pompeo met with him, and Bill Binney presented his argument to show that it was an internal download of the DNC and the Podesta computers, not a Russian hack. And he's uh, proven this. He's written extensively about it, and it's now confirmed when Sean Henry, the president of CrowdStrike, which was the original source for the argument that Russia hacked, uh, when Sean Henry acknowledged and admitted under oath in the Congress that there was no exfiltration of documents, that is, no hacking. Did Pompeo ever bring up that Russiagate was a complete fraud? Did he ever say there was no Russian hacking? No, he continued to say that Russia interfered in our election process. So on each of these points, he undermined the position of President Trump and did so in a way that our uh, allies could see that he was actually operating against the, the interests of President Trump. When he went to England and met with the Henry Jackson Society, he gave his stamp of approval, Pompeo did, to the forces that were running Russiagate against Trump. Now, today, actually, and just one other point on the Binney question, what he told Binney is that he trusted the CIA analysts, whereas President Trump, after the Helsinki conference, said he trusted Putin more than he did the U.S. intelligence community. 
So again, Pompeo was organized against, organizing against President Trump. Now listen to what Tony Blinken, Biden's Secretary of State, had to say about China yesterday. He said, the challenge posed by China is different from that of Russia. He says, China is the only country with the economic, diplomatic, military, and technological power to seriously challenge the rules, values, and relationship that makes the world work the way we want it to. Now, what does he mean by that? He means the City of London globalist world rules-based order. The global corporate cartels dictating to nations what they can and cannot do. And since China doesn't accept that, and by the way, neither did Iraq nor Libya, look what happened to them. Russia doesn't accept that same rules-based order because it benefits global corporations, not sovereign nations. But Blinken said that China is challenging that order. Well, they are, and they should, and so should we. Blinken went on to say that our relationship with China will be competitive when it should be, collaborative when it can be, and adversarial when it must be. In other words, where they go against this rules-based order. And so he says, that's why we work with allies and partners, because where we have pulled back, China has filled in. Yeah, where is he talking about? In Africa, where we've done nothing to develop nations, and Europe continues a colonial-style relationship through finance, the Chinese are building roads and bridges and canals and, and high-speed rail. That's something that the Chinese asked us to join them in. But according to Pompeo that rep and Blinken, that represents a threat to American interests. So this is a total defense of the rules-based order by Blinken that Pompeo asserts we must support. The, now, other areas of comparison. You know, many people say, well, Biden is a complete reversal of the Trump policy. Well, if the Trump policy was that of Pompeo, Blinken is continuing it. For example, siding with the human rights mafia, as in the Navalny case, where we just issued new sanctions against Russia, the same way Pompeo is planning. Uh, this, this is in support of the human rights mafia that ran the coup in Ukraine in 2014, that ran the regime change wars in Iraq, Libya, and Syria, which continue today and are behind the attacks, the same human rights mafia that attacked Trump with Russiagate. This is the same human rights mafia that's tied to big tech and censorship, and which today is saying that the supporters of Donald Trump are right-wing, white, racist nationalists. So the question then is, why are the endless wars continuing? That's because of the permanent bureaucracy which Pompeo represented the military-industrial complex, the so-called deep state, was not removed from power during the Trump administration. In fact, in some ways, it strengthened its hold through people like Pompeo and Esper and Christopher Wray and Gina Haspel. And its strategic allies in London and the British Empire were not identified as leading the charge, as the leading opponents of the American system who have subverted our institutions through the deployment of people like uh, Obama, Clapper, Brennan, and Comey. Now, America's future depends on identifying who our real enemies are. Our real enemies are not Russia and China, which are so sovereign states, which oppose the global reset. They oppose the Green New Deal. This is where Biden is allying himself with the British Empire in their Malthusian genocidal policy, not just against the third world, but against the American people. The, what they're moving now for is the next phase of a global dictatorship, the Great Reset and the Green New Deal. So what's the point? Why do people continue to make excuses for someone like Pompeo who's on the other side? Now, What's necessary instead is to join with us to defeat them. Click on the promo below in the description section of this video to purchase our new report, the Executive Intelligence Reviews Report, The Great Leap Backwards. This will give you 
a strategic picture of who our enemies are, what their policy is, and what their vulnerabilities are. And their greatest vulnerability is that neither the American people nor the people of Russia and China, and for that matter, the people of Germany and Europe, are willing to give up their sovereignty to the global bankers who are profiting incredibly from the current world order and are planning to increase their profits by grabbing 30 to 40 trillion dollars through this great reset while imposing massive austerity, disinvestment in infrastructure, uh, cutting off payments for necessary programs in order to afford the continuing bailout of the bankrupt financial institutions. That's the rules-based order that Mike Pompeo defended. That's the new world order that George Herbert Walker Bush talked about in 1992. That order is collapsing. It's weak. We have to finish it off, and that means we have to know who's doing it, why, what their vulnerabilities are, and what our potential strengths are, what alliances we must make to win. So next time you hear someone defending Mike Pompeo, ask them, why did he never tell anybody what Bill Binney told him about Russiagate, which could have ended that nonsense in the fall of 2017? Thanks for joining me today. I'll be back tomorrow for Friday questions. Please send me your questions and I'll take them up. Uh, send them to me at harleysch at gmail.com. Until then, see you.